Okay, let's take a, take a look at a systematic approach to phase diagrams that I've uh, come up with. It's just a structured way of thinking about a phase diagram question. <clears throat> I found a lot of students have found this useful over the years. So what I like to always say with phase diagrams is you start off with a set of coordinates. Now I should tell you that's not really a formal name. It's not a formal um, <coughs> uh, term that's applied to phase equilibria. It's just a name that I like to use to start things off to remind us of the fact that we've got temperature plotted on the vertical axis and composition on the horizontal axis. And really, in the basic, most basic sense, that's what a phase diagram is all about, plotting these two things, temperature and composition, and for various combinations of those, telling us the equilibrium structure. <clears throat> composition, I'll remind you, by convention, is, it, is expressed in weight percent component on the right. Okay, good. So we start off with some coordinates and we proceed from there. <clears throat> and then we'll say, well, here's a little decision point or a question that you can ask yourself. You can say, self, I've got some coordinates and I placed it on, a on the phase diagram. <clears throat> Is there a single phase present? Has this set of coordinates placed me in a single phase region on the phase diagram? <clears throat> If the answer to that is, uh, how am I going to do this? I'll, actually, I'll say it, I'll put it over here. If the answer to that is yes, well, then you've just got, of course, a single phase at composition C0, the overall composition. And I'll remind you. Um, I'll write in that. I'll note that that's the starting composition. That's the overall composition. We call that the overall composition, overall uh, composition. All right, excellent. But phase diagram questions don't usually put you over here, because that's a really straightforward question, single phase at the composition um, that's already provided. So what about if things get a little bit more interesting? There's not one phase. <coughs> well, then you could ask yourself, uh, I was going to use a red, not that it really matters, but just, I don't know, so it looks pretty, I guess. There's a red box. So now we say, are there, I'm going to jump to three phases. All right, are there three phases? <clears throat> and if the answer to so that question is yes, and we've got a binary phase diagram, which is what we're exploring in this class, <clears throat> then you're going to find, of course, if there's three phases coexisting, you're at an invariant point. Invariant point. The degrees of freedom in Gibbs phase rule has dropped to zero. That's an invariant point. And what are invariant points? <clears throat> well, we can have a eutectic. We can have something that looks like a eutectic but has no liquid, eutectoid. We can have a paratectic. We can have a paratectoid. And of course, we can have a monotectic. two immiscible liquids. <clears throat> okay, so, so that's one place we can end up. But really, more of the, and, and th those are very interesting, but a lot of times what we find is we come to this scenario here where the answer to the question, was it three phases is no, the answer to the, phase, the question is it one phase is no. So of course the result is if it's not two, uh, one phase and it's not three phases, it has to be two phases.
Okay? And so this is then where things get you know, particularly interesting, I think. As soon as you see your, that you've identified your, your coordinates have placed you on a, in a two-phase region, the very first thing you should do is draw a tie line. Each and every time. As soon as you see that two, cord, two, two phases, tie line right away. <clears throat> and what does the tie line provide for us? Well, the tie line provides for us <clears throat> what the phases are, what phases are present. That is, the tie line intercepts a phase on the left and a phase on the right. And those are the two phases that are present. Um, and the other thing it, it provides for us, of course, is the composition of each phase. Again, composition is in weight percent component on the right. Okay, same units as we had over here. But now there's two phases. One has a certain com composition, another has a different composition. <clears throat> and then once you do the, the tie line, you can then move right into, of course, doing a lever rule calculation. And the lever rule will tell us how much of one phase there is and how much of the other phase there, there, there are, uh, is present. Lever rule. And the lever rule tells us of each phase is present. Now, the thing that can be sometimes confusing is we often express the lever rule, the results of the lever rule, in weight percent. It could be expressed in a fraction as a fraction of the total system mass. You know, you've got a, a, a one kilogram sample. Well, what fraction of that? Is it 50%? Is it 40% of that total one kilogram is present as liquid or solid or alpha or beta? Um, but we often express it. We take that fraction and multiply by 100%. And we express it then in weight percent. But don't be confused with the weight percent from composition. Weight percent from composition is weight percent of the component on the right. Weight percent as the result of the lever rule is weight percent of one phase <coughs> relative to the total which is the total mass, OK? And that, those are the units of the lever rule. So that's, that's phase equilibria um, in a systematic approach. I hope that helps. Thanks.